there, Lynx here, and welcome to more of ATP Projects. That's right, this time it's time for Temperance. Let's check this one out. You are Morgan. You are raising one child, the three-year-old girl Temperance. Oh my god, why do you do this to me, game? At the moment, you are staying home with her. Your significant other, Casey, is away. <gasps> Did she abandon us or something? Casey is on a four-day burnout prevention program. Huh? This is day three. You are alone with Tempe. Tempe. Today and tomorrow. Then Casey comes back. I uh, I wake up. Quiet beat. Tempe didn't have a good night. She woke up twice. twice. It took me around 20 minutes to get her to fall asleep again. The first time was at 1am and I was able to fall asleep once she did. But the second time, 3.30am, when she finally fell asleep, I couldn't. It took me until around 6 to fall asleep myself. And now it's 8 and Temp just woke up. She's mighty annoyed, so I must act. I give her a pacifier. Pass? She's 3 years old, she doesn't need that anymore. Because I know that way she stays calm for the next 10 minutes. Give me, me some time to prepare her bottle without her screaming. Okay, I don't know about children, but three years seems like a little bit much to, you know, the pacifier still. Whatever. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Who cares? I don't have kids. And I don't think I ever will, so whatever. Because I don't necessarily want as well, right? The bottle is ready and I think about today. I have some stuff to take care of. I need to go and buy groceries. And a friend of ours is giving us some used baked clothes of theirs. We can use those because Tempe is destroying everything she wears. She's a very live, uh, lively child. Which isn't a problem, frankly. It's her hissy fits. They are killing us and we've been enduring them ever since spring. Now it's winter and there are no signs of let them letting up. I don't think they've gotten worse. Every day is five times she throws those tantrums. It's so exhausting. And it never ends and Casey and I have been talking about this. We saw our doctor, but she said it's normal and it will pass. But when? I'm so afraid, with every passing day, the Tempe will never stop having her fits. I mean, she has been doing it for almost a year now, one third of her life. Maybe she'll get used to it and then what? We plan on putting her to kindergarten in the summer. But it will never work if she's like this. And we don't even know what to do if the kindergarten doesn't work out. She's already late to the kindergarten as this, and if this continues... It has to end, it just has to. And maybe today would be a good day. She looks so pretty now. Ah, child... Mm. Calm. And I feel like it's going to be okay besides in total, I probably got... At least 5 hours of sleep tonight, so it's not that bad. And maybe I can watch something in the evening when she falls asleep. Maybe even a movie. I could make myself a smoothie and lay out some snacks nicely on a plate. It would be so nice to have an evening like a normal person. It's time for breakfast. We sit at our kitchen table. Tempe is happy she's eating her bread roll. 
do you want more milk? Ask her and she nods with her mouth full. She's so adorable, so pretty. She points at things endlessly, requesting some from form of commentary or answer. Is that she's yellow? Tempe cannot touch the knife. Look the green plant. There are the same things over and over again. And I'm giving her pretty much the same responses each time. It's lively at the table, but I don't mind. I sometimes imagine how it is to have a quiet breakfast. Actually, Casey is probably having one right now. Casey, I hope that it all goes well with the burnout prevention. I know Tempe is contributing to that a lot. But that's what the program is for. So that the three of us can make it work. We finish breakfast, and Tempe instinctively goes to the bathroom to get changed and to brush her teeth. I'm surprised at her today, I don't even have to prompt her. She picks the clothes from the options I laid out for her, and even lets me make sure she brushed properly. The teeth, I mean, right? And so I finish brushing her teeth myself, where she wasn't thorough enough. We kiss. It's a thing she started doing with Casey. As a form of saying, my brief is now super fresh. No, don't kiss your child like that. I find it weird, but whatever. I now gather all our things and get the stroller ready. We'll go to the playground first, and then go to pick up the clothes from our friends. I don't have time to cook, so we'll go to a restaurant for the lunch. And later I'll have to buy groceries. We'll probably be out for most of the day. Tempe, come, we are going to go out now. I called her knowing she's her room, where she went to. While I was gathering all the things we need today. Tempe! I call her trying to convey slightly more authority in my voice this time. No! She tells me as I walk into her room where she's lying on the floor. Peeking through a tunnel made of blocks. But we have to... We go to a playground and then meet Aunt Chloe. I want to play here! She responds determinedly. Her voice changes into wine. But sweetie... I want to stay home! She replies and gets into a defensive stance, her wine becoming pitch even higher. Sweetie, we really need to go. I say more the coming close to her to pick her up from the floor. She's very upset now and her eyes are filled with tears. It's helplessness and anger. But we'll need to go. Hold still, Tempe. I say with a raised voice almost angrily. Tempe is now on the hallway floor riffing and screaming. Because to enter I had to put a million layers on her and it's almost impossible. Tides are so difficult as are the tops without the spider to go over the head. And then... Darn it. I can't fight her left boot. <laughs> and as I turn around to look for it, she immediately kicks off the one I just put on. And slides down from the small little chair she was sitting in. For a freaking second, I let her go and she does all of this. Temp! I say, trying to control my anger and frustration. Don't do that, Tempe, it will take that much longer. But she doesn't listen. The fact that I picked her up from the floor and put back to her chair. Infuriated her so much she is now thrashing around with rage. What? 
The hell? The sound of her voice pierces my ears. The high pitch of it is almost unbearable. I only have the code to go, but... I can see how red she is now, already sweating from doing all of this. While wearing a sweater and winter clothes. The longer this goes on, the worse. Doesn't she know? Let her be, wait, distract her with something, reason with her, explain why, talk sternly. I know man, this girl, seems like you kind of failed. <laughs> Uh, raising the kid already kind of there. Uh, let's go with third, whatever. No. Nothing works. She's still kicking and screaming, ignoring me in her rage. Her eye... I double click. Okay, I use them. I can't use the mouse because it's double clicking. It's hard to hear myself talking, so of course she can't hear me. Her eyes crying closed. Should I try something else? Sing to her, offer embrace, give her something sweet, turn it all to fun. Uh, let's try with the last one, whatever. Alright, I'm going to. I want to go now! Tempe declares suddenly standing up as if nothing were. Sometimes it's her who ends the tantrum, and occasionally it will be like this. Out of blue, as if someone has exchanged her for someone else. I don't click, don't click now. But I don't care, I'm taking this. You see, Tempe, it's all good, let me just wipe this off and... We're done. We managed to get to the bus stop and get on the line 45. This will take us to where Chloe lives. I parked the stroller in the designated area on the bus and look out the window, Tempe on my lap. We're coming a bit earlier, so I can let Tempe play on a playground close to where Chloe lives. Tempe doesn't know the playground that much, so I'm hoping she finds it interesting. Suddenly a sound makes me snap out of my thoughts. That sound. A toy. Tempe has dropped the toy card she had in her hand. It tumbled on the ground and landed about three rows in front of us. Tempe, sit here and hold to this bar, I'll get your car. I tell her, but she wants to get out of the seat, into a dale and get it herself. No, please sit. It will be dangerous. It's dangerous. Yeah, sorry. I'll get the car, it's dangerous, yeah. Anyway. The bus is going through a residential area and seems to turn at every corner swaying. I have trouble holding my balance, let alone her. And it, all it takes is one awkward fall. No, it's not like I fear these things, I do let her run around the playground. But letting her get the car in a moving bus would increase the chances of her falling down to almost a certainty. And I'm not going to let her do that. My hair are a mess. Whatever. Car! She screams. Listen, please sit down. If you don't sit, I still, I still, I can't get the car. Tempe starts to kick her feet and slides down from the seat. She's upset. Usually people pick up our toys, but there is no one else on the bus now. Alright, give me your hand and let's get there together. I said but realized I've done it too late. I'm so stupid. This is now my fault. No! Tempe doesn't want to go together. But neither does she want me to get the car. In fact, she doesn't want to stay in her seat either. We can sit over there. I suggest changing our seats so that we are closer to the car. Which I'll just grab on the way. No! No, she says. I don't know what to do. She starts crying. She cannot formulate what she wants. By now, for I don't think she even knows what she wants anymore. We stop and people get in. Tempe is crying with that whiny voice of hers. I try to hold her tightly so she doesn't slip away, but... That just makes her twist and rush about even more. Ah! 
she's screaming uncontrollably now. She wants that car over there. An old lady. <laughs> An old lady that just got on the bus tells me <laughs> she's pointing the toy on the bus floor. Yeah, we know that. Don't you want to get it? She asks in a kind of patronizing voice. Sorry. Don't you want to get it? Fucking bitch. Uh, boom. I can't reach it and she doesn't want it anymore. I'll grab it when we get off, it's okay. Well, it seems to have shut her up. Good. I just really dislike people who think they know better. I mean, you say that, but clearly you are not good at fathering. Or are trying to help. In fact, I prefer the jerk who stands by and doesn't help. To the ones who gives out parenting advice. And no, I don't care how many kids you've raised. Bitch. Meanwhile, Tempe has calmed down. Gradually. I can then quickly grab the car as we just stop at the red light. We reach the playground. Tempe is quite eager to explore a science spade. Even though it's quite cold, she's not complaining. Immersed in picking up stones. I stand next to a bench, but I stay to sit down, just because it may be really cold. And so I pay ease at a distance from Tempe to keep myself warm. A few minutes pass, and I decide I need something. It's... An energy drink, a sweet croissant! Uh, let's say croissant, I actually feel like eating something. Uh, I have a sweet croissant stash in Temp's stroller. It's from yesterday, but it's okay. Tastes alright. After a while, I think of my friends. I used to have many and Casey and I still do, but... We don't see them often. They almost never visit. I mean, understandable. Once the cuteness of the new baby wore off. What do you mean? The babies are not cute. Casey and I were, I guess, too inflexible. Like, hey, you want to go see the movie tomorrow? They ask, but don't they understand? We can't just go out like that. We don't even have a babysitter. Yo, just drop them by the grandparents. <laughs> I mean, we have made attempts, but nothing came of it. So then they want to just hang out or do something. But it's almost always in the evening. We can't do evenings, people! We just can't! I mean, it's possible, but it's such a hassle. Why don't we meet in the morning? I don't know, because they have to go to work to survive. No, they all slip in. Yeah, right. In the afternoon, they suggest. It's like they abandoned us. They just go about their things, having fun without us. I don't think they know how it feels to have no time. But... I guess it's not their obligation to change their lifestyle. I envy them so much. I really do, I really, really envy them. To be able to come home and do whatever they want. To relax on the wind or something. And then they complain that, oh, I have the time to do stuff, it's like... I don't even... They just don't understand, and I know they don't even attempt to. And why should they? It's not their problem. But I just feel like they are not so close to us anymore. And that Casey and I are more all alone. I mean, do you need them? Oh, that's great. A mild headache is creeping up on me. Not good. I don't need any more discomfort. Take a pill. Let it be. I mean, I wouldn't take anything for the head, so yeah. I should have this one out. I mean, that's how I always do it, you know. 
So, yeah. I don't want to get dependent on this stuff too much. Yeah, I mean, only when it's really unbearable. It's time to leave and meet Chloe. She's one of our new friends, people with children around Temp's age. Except her son already visits the kindergarten. I can't imagine how that would be to have Tempe taken care of for a while. I call Tempe. Nothing. She's immersed in poking a stick at the soft surface underneath the climbing area. I come closer. Tempe will need to go soon, sweetie. Oh, to stay some more! She says. Yes, yes, you can stay for a bit longer, for I'll be back, okay? I say. It's a tactic that we were told helps, and it does occasionally. We announced to her in advance what we plan to do, giving her time to prepare. But I don't want to go! Uh, she responds just as I'm about to turn around to give her 10 more minutes. You don't have to yet. I say, but I do say yet, because I cannot lie to her in this situation. I say the yet quieter, but still audible enough for her to pick up. I don't want her to get upset, but I can't stretch the time for too long. Not yet, she says. Many times she picks up on the subtleties and, say, and she wants to stay until she sees fit. Sweetie, it's alright, you can play alright, and then we'll go. No, no, to stay! Even if I'm walking away, she does not let it go. Just play for a bit more, okay? Then we meet Aunt Chloe, she's nice, right? No! She says, throwing the stick away. At this point, it's all inevitable. Another tantrum, huh? She starts to cry and throws herself on the ground. What the fuck, man? I mean, I've seen this happening in public before, and, you know, only was... What the freak is wrong with that kid? On the cold ground. Offer Empress. Let her be... Wait. Let Offer Empress. Let her be... Wait. Give her something sweet. Turn to the fun. Talk sternly. Link to her. Distract her. Some reason of her. Explain why. Let's try, whatever, Tempe. We must go now, Aunt Chloe is waiting. I press to explain why people need to be on time. But she seems to ignore everything I'm saying. Really? Ever f it failed? God damn it. Hmm. Let's try turning it. <laughs> You're so funny! I pointed her as if it amused me that she threw herself on the ground. Oh. I failed as well. AGAIN! I demand. And... Tempest stands up and throws herself on the ground, trying to make it funny. AGAIN! I demand it and she does it again. What? I pretend to laugh, but in fact it's kind of funny to me at this point. You're so funny! I tell her. That's not what I expected. She smiles back, her face full of tears. Let's take the car and show it to Aunt Chloe, okay? Okay! She says, picking herself up and stumbling. I help her. Do we go? Yes! I smile. We arrive at Chloe's place. She meets us outside and even walks with us a bit. Tempe is in the stroller and she and Chloe have a nice moment. Where Tempe is showing her the new toy car she got. It's a cheat! Is it a cheetah? Yeah, cheat! It's a cheetah Royal LX. Sounds like a car from Grand Theft Auto. Grand Theft Auto. After a while, we are alone. I'm walking at a slower pace towards the restaurant I want to have lunch at. Tempe is observing the surroundings. It's so nice. The air is cold and I feel refreshed every time I breathe in. Tempe is so sweet. I stop, look at her and just come close to her giving her a faint kiss on the cheek. She smiles. 
It's that beautiful smile that I so often try to take a picture of. But the moment is gone within seconds. I'm hungry! Tempest says. We're going to the restaurant, it won't be long. Rest every. Yeah, you can order whatever you want. I stand, she smiles. I stand up and take the handles of the stroller. We go towards the restaurant. Oh boy, the restaurant is very nice. Oh boy, this this just is... I predict a tragedy over there. We've been here once or twice already. Tempest sits in a high chair now playing queer car. It's the only high chair they have so we're lucky. I look through the menu. Soon I decide. And Tempe. I know that when I ask her she will want pasta. But we have pasta so often I'd like to at least attend something else every once in a while. But if I order and she hates it, which she probably will since it's not pasta. She'll not eat it and then be cranky because she's hungry. I mean, we can ask. Why is there no option to ask? Let's order pasta. Fuck it. We order when wait. After not getting anything for 15 minutes, for Tempest starts getting twitchy. I'm angry at stuff now because I feel like they should prioritize us. Why would they fall? Maybe you weren't first there. Don't they know children are impatient? And this restaurant doesn't even have a kids play area. So all the more we should be prioritized. Not really. I think the couple that now sits over there came later than us and they are eating. I don't know, maybe Blayford took less time to prepare man. God damn it. Freak this, seriously. We're here first and I have a small kid. I just hope she doesn't. She does for... I want to eat home! Temp suddenly says. Freak. Those assholes, it's all their fault now. I mean, dude, it, I, I just knew that it was going to be a... A tragedy, straight up. Don't go with little kids to restaurant, for heaven's sake. If I get too nervous, Temp will notice and it won't help at all. Project Coolness, Morgan. Well, the food is now made pretty much finished. The cook's probably just looking for nice plates. No, I want to go home. Tempe, we've waited this long. It's really coming very soon. Look, we have to find a parking spot for the cheetah before the food arrives. What do you think is a good place? I tried to strike her, but I don't want to eat. I want to go home. She says even more resolutely and starts sliding down the high chair. Luckily the chair is dying so that she can't fall down, but still she is now halfway down. Then she reaches for the cheetah and throws it on the floor. Tempe throwing things on the floor is wrong, they get dirty and someone may sleep on them or break them. I say as I pick it up. <coughs> Tempe makes this high pitched shriek that is her sign of resistance when she's angry. But then... Oh hey look, the food is coming! The cheerfully points to the waiter, who is carrying out the order. About time. But maybe it will help, maybe she'll calm down now that the food is here. I don't want to eat! She says, and as the waiter is putting the plate in front of her, she pushes it away, staining her hands. What? She starts to cry, probably because it's hot. The waiter disappears and I hastily clean her hands. I'm not gonna lie, I feel like the father is the biggest problem. It's okay, see, now we can eat. It's all good. I say hoping to calm things down. No, I don't want to eat! She says. It's as if there is no rhyme or reason, no logic. Why do I bother even talking to her? I might as well flip a coin, say anything. Please, Tampa, please. I have to try again, I have to deep breathe and... 
All right, you know what? I'll eat my food and if you don't want yours, you can play with the cheetah and then we go, okay? I say that, but... We leave the restaurant after Temper has made a huge mess. She has calmed down. It kind of made me feel a bit better. I hope they have a lot to clean, those assholes. Wow, you're a piece of shit, man. I decide to take the bus home. We still have to stop at the supermarket. I'm feeling quite tired already. I hope they spit into his food. It makes no sense to push myself at this time of day. I need to have enough strength to pull through the rest of the day, the evening routine and so on. Still, here, now, it's nice again. Tempe is so sweet. Eh. She was walking since we left the restaurant holding my hands. It did mean I had to push the stroller with one hand which was tiring but oh my god yes it must have been so freaking tiring. Tempe was so sweet. She made those small steps that showed she was walking at what was a quick pace for her. And that hot. She looks so cute in it. Casey loves it too. And we can recognize her easily by it whenever she's playing outside. Now she sits beside me with the cheetah in her hands. Looking outside of a window. She's so wonderful. The face she has when she's intensely immersed in something. There are such soft lines that her face has. She almost drops the cheetah now as she keeps looking outside. Well towards she hands the car to me as to say I should hold on to it. She's so amazing. So calm, so sweet. Yeah, you will not be saying those words in 5 seconds. I cannot hold it longer and give her a soft hug. She was grand, it's mine and holds it. And I'm literally in tears as I watch her keeping on watching the scenery. I walk with the super equipped with the temp in the stroller. I know what I need and walk resolutely past the ales that normally interest her. Sweet snacks, juices, toys. We don't try to avoid these things completely, but we buy them only occasionally. It works most of the time. I grab the things, but there is a long line at the checkout. Oh my god. Now we stand in line. And Tempest sees all the small things that are positioned along where the lines form. She starts her hand and points at a chewy strawberry candy. Tempe, Tempe, some other time, alright? I want the red candy! The red candy, they are very chewy. Tempe, they stick to their teeth, they are for bigger kids. No, I want it, I want the red candy! She starts using a whiny voice. Tempe, we need to stay focused here. I say even before I realize she doesn't really understand what I mean. But that's right, I'm hoping that Hon conveys it. No! This makes me remember some Ugh. story from the past that supposedly as a kid I was not a piece of shit. Basically, you know, I was like, uh, Mom, can I have this? No, 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 no. Okay. And, you know, then you see kids throwing tantrums about stuff like that. It's ridiculous. Then again, I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I think I wouldn't be a good parent, basically, you know? So I'd rather not have kids because of that as well. Anyway, she reacts to her feet around, hitting the person in front of us. Stop it, temperance. I said apologize to the person in front of us. I quickly assess how much longer we need to be in line. Unfortunately, the people before us have lots of items. And also, one of the things is it's not really evening, the supermarket will be less crowded. What? Not necessarily true. I would say uh, evening will be less crowded than during the day. At least that's how it works for me uh, most of the times. 99% of the times. 99.9. .9. Because I basically go like half an hour before closing and it's barely any people there. Anyway. <coughs> and it is, but then they reduce the number of persons at the cash register. 
people, number of people at the cash registers. So the lines are all the same. Soon, Tempe, you can help me put our things up on the counter. But Tempe doesn't listen anymore. She tries to take off her boot. Stop it, Tempe! You need boots too. She starts to scream. I close my eyes and breathe for a second. Under my hands, I feel how the stroll is torn from side to side. As Tempe runs inside of it in a state of anger. Ah, fuck it, let's just... Explaining anything to this kid seems to not work anyway. Let's give her something sweet, whatever. The thought of simply giving her the red candy comes to cross my mind, but... No, to give in now, she would... She would remember this, and if she won't... If she gets what she wants by throwing a fit... Oh, okay, let's try to explain then. I better to explain why she can't have the candy. I then go on and explain why she shouldn't throw a fit here. Tempa doesn't listen. It almost feels like I'm doing all this just so that the other pot people in line won't judge me. Even if I know they do. Yeah, we do! You know that we do! Uh... Let's try the embrace, whatever. Turn to her and want to come closer. But she waves her hands and almost scratches me. Okay. Wonderful. Just wonderful. Uh, it's okay, let's try, whatever. She would. Should remember this. And if she gets what she wants by throwing a fit. I just can't. I'm too afraid of the consequences. Really? Ah, oh, that's so dumb. Sing. <laughs> okay, whatever. I can't do that right now. To sing here, just can't. I probably wouldn't help anyway. Great, great. Should we turn this all to fun again? Let her. Whatever, whatever. Maybe I could, but no, I can't turn this into something funny. Seriously, we're going to let her be. I proceed to ignore her. She sits in the store, and I only need to keep her in. Luckily, she doesn't want to get out. So I let her have her fit. I let her scream. And then there are the judging looks of people standing in line with me. Screw you, judge all you want. Dude, no, screw you. She's still a small child. That's no explanation. I don't even have the strength to care about you people anymore. It's all your fault anyway. That's right, that's your fault, man. If you lay out your sword to take advantage of kids. Huh? You have no right to judge or complain when they scream. Is this guy's name Karen or something? So screw you everyone. We are home playing. I built a house out of plastic blocks. And we are pretending it's a hospital. The cheetah has a crush and it must be brought in. We check it, Tempe puts a pretend bandage on it and it, off it goes. My eyes are tired and I keep yawning, but it's all okay. I try to follow her words, but occasionally I find myself nodding without knowing what she is asking. Or just repeat what she said, followed by yes. I catch myself and force myself to pay more attention. And I hug and kiss her whenever I get the chance, but try not to be too annoying. She's so pretty. Showing me things, explaining. Soon she gets immersed and I can leave the room for a moment. Sometimes I wonder. I may tell her one day how she was when she was a child, but... I don't think she'll care. I never do when I get told those stories. It's like she's a person now, whom only me and Casey will know. For a few years longer, she will be this wonderful human being and... Ah, you don't know that, man! I know that after she has grown up, a little no one will care. 
Do I care about what I was like when I was little? I don't, that's why. Only Casey and I will ever reminisce. Only Casey and I will ever have memories of this one wonderful person. A person that will no longer exist, because it will have changed so much. That it may as well be a completely different one. But that's alright. This time, this temper, I know I will never experience anything more beautiful. For dinner we have leftovers from yesterday. Tempe eats up everything. We watch rescue kitties, after which she takes her things and heads to the bathroom. It's so wonderful. I feel like today was very difficult for her and that maybe she's slowly realizing Casey is not here. She keeps asking. But it's alright, Casey will be back soon. I tell her. She nods her head and she hands me her toothbrush to let me finish brushing her teeth. After she has brushed a little. Tempest splashes in the bath. For a while she plays with her bathtub toys and then we'll finish up. She doesn't even complain when I scrub her with a towel which she usually dislikes. <coughs> we put on her pajamas and head to bed. And they had a great party when they came back home. I end the story and close the book. I look at Tempe who is tucked in her bed. Good night, sweetie. I kiss her on the cheek and I'm about to switch off the night light in her room when I want to play with you, she says. Tempe, it's time to go to sleep now. The story's over. It's night. No! <sighs> but you are in your pajamas. Croc, croc is with you. No, I want to play! Ugh. She says, sitting up in bed. Even though she doesn't take naps anymore, she's not tired yet. And it's quite late. It's really late, Tempe. We can play tomorrow. What do you say? I came closer. Give her a kiss on her forehead, then trying to get her to lay down again. She pushes back for. Not more! I want to play with the trains! But the trains are sleeping now. They're not sleeping! I play with the play! She repeats in a pleading voice. Tempe. I start realizing the whisper in my voice. I guess already picturing myself sinking in the couch, but... Please. She said, sorry, please! She says, kicking a blanket away. She wants to get out of bed. I gently called her, but she's determined. Tempe, why don't I uh, use the flashlight and we'll check if the trains are sleeping, alright? I want to avoid Tempe switching all the main room light, which I know she'd be going for. As I said, I turn on my flashlight, point it on the direction of the trains. See, sleeping, shh, come and see, but let's be very quiet. I say as we are going on a summon venture. If Tempo falls long, I may have a chance. No, they're not sleeping! She says and runs towards the light switch. Psh. She turns on the light. I get dizzy, I have no energy to deal with this anymore. She says, but I know this will only wake her up more. No, Temp. I can't. You should really go to sleep now. I say knowing what will happen. But you have to play with me! She screams and starts to cry. Play with me! And then... Out! I stepped on a bloody toy. Probably that stupid plastic rhino. <sighs> stay calm, stay calm. Hey, look, yeah, it's the rhino. We forgot to put it to the bed and it looks tired. I sit biting down on my pain and... Rhino has to sleep! Tempa suddenly says, and I breathe in deeply. In haste, I point out the rhino can sleep on her pillow. She follow... Is it a good idea? She falls, having seemingly forgotten she was crying just a second ago. Finally. It's over. Tempe is sleeping. And I fell... I, and I feel as for the second she fell asleep, a timer started ticking down. Until she wakes up again. I am... Relieved, exhausted, destroyed. Uh... 
exhausted, right? I feel like the best thing is to go to sleep as soon as I can. I take a shower and go to bed. I need to get as much sleep as I can. Before I go, I take a chocolate bar I've been meaning to enjoy. It's really nice it's meant for the more special occasions. I just want to eat it. Now. All of it. And so I do. After that, I'm too weak to do anything, just get into bed and fall asleep. <laughs> oh boy. Oh. He's clearly, I mean, he and his wife, or girlfriend, whatever, fiance, they clearly failed at some point if that kid is throwing tum tantrums like a few times a day like this. It's crazy. Uh, I think that at least because, well, as far as I'm concerned, I did not throw tantrums like that. So I guess that's great. On the other hand, for, uh, I feel like, man, I really don't want to have children in the end. Like, I feel like... I wouldn't be a good father. I was gonna like. I just feel like I wouldn't. Plus, I mean, do I want to give to get someone to this world? I feel like not, and especially not this country. Anyway, hope you enjoyed Temperance. Uh, we'll continue some other game, of course, probably tomorrow. Hope to see you there as well. Have a wonderful day. Bye bye.